Good morning. I'll quote you my favorite verse, okay? He that tooteth not his own horn, the same shall not be tooted. Now you'll find that in the book of Deuteronomy, if you don't know where it is. <laughs> Let me just say that on the dictionary project, how proud we are of what we were able to accomplish. I know that coming up, those of you that know me, I have 12 sisters and I have three brothers. There are 16 of us all together. And uh, I struggled in school. I flunked the second grade, the sixth grade, and dropped out in the 10th grade. As a teenager, I came to know Christ as my Savior, and uh, it turned my life around. I went to the store, and I bought me a pocket dictionary. I carried it with me everywhere I went, and every time I read a word that I didn't know, I looked it up, and became a vocabulary word. Went back to high school at night for three years, got a high school diploma. Then four years of college and got me a college degree because someone directed me to get a high school education, go buy me a dictionary, and that's why I'm glad that we give the dictionaries out. And so I took the horn for Rotary and what we've been able to get accomplished here locally. Let's pray. Our Father, we're grateful that you've allowed us to be here. We thank you for your love, your goodness to us. We thank you for Rotary and what we do internationally and what we do locally. I pray that you'll bless the Golds program today, bless this food to our bodies, and we'll be grateful for what you choose to accomplish in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Locke, uh, and also for the story and the impact that Dictionary has had on his life, and I know the impact it's having on others. Thank you to Robin for greeting us, uh, and Debbie for the programs as always. She spends a lot of time on those. Thank you. I'm excited to be here and um, very excited to be with our student and our Rick Perkins Award winner, who you'll be in introduced to in just a second. But um, Janet Smith, she needs no introduction, does she? No. Um, she is our goal coordinator and director of student activities. We also have Susan Hammock, if Susan will stand up. Susan is our coordinator for student activities and our she coordinates our Rick Perkins Award winner. That's our instructor of the year. We have Kelly Braxton who's our Rick Perkins Award winner, and she'll be introduced and give her speech in a minute um, more fully by Susan. And Joyce Davis. Joyce retired from Oconee Fall Line, but she came back. She helps in our tutoring center. She also works with our goal and Rick Perkins um, instructor and student to prepare them for uh, state competition. We have Lucretia Marion. Lucretia was our 2019 Rick Perkins instructor, and she nominated our goal winner and our goal winner is Summer Pope um, and she's wonderful and I'm excited to get to hear from all these wonderful people today. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to um, Janet Smith. Well, thank you. I told her I thought she was going to say Brim Hilda and she said she almost did. <laughs> anyway, so thank you again for letting us be your program. This is the 49th year at the state level for the goal program, but it's your 28th year for having goal as your program. And I can keep up with that from the year that I went to work many years ago. GOAL is an acronym for Georgia Occupational Award of, of Leadership. There are 22 technical colleges in the state of Georgia, 88 campuses, over 600 online classes, over 140 students, 140,000 students, and we have 1,800 students, and to be selected as the goal winner is quite an accomplishment. So we're very proud of you, Summer. But let me tell you where some of these past goal winners are now. We have one that's a pilot. We have one that works at Warner Robins Air Force Base. We have the city engineer of Dublin was a goal winner. We have someone that works at Diesel Rider Trucking, and this is a female that works there. She was in the diesel program. We have someone who works with TJS Deemer Dana. We have someone who works with CBS in Atlanta. Med First, Oconee Fall Line, Oconee Fall Line. We have someone that's at the, Me the Macon Medical Center. Another person that is an Oconee Fall Line instructor now, someone that was with South Central, that is with South Central Health District, Nathan. We have someone that works with the Carl Vinson VA Center and a para pro in a public school. 
So that's amazing that we have all those people that came through the Technical College System of Georgia and are now working at these different places. So that's wonderful for them and for Technical College. But how do you get to be a gold student? Instructors nominate students who are in good standing with the college and would be a good ambassador for technical education. And this year the nominees were nominated and then they went before the selection group of the deans. The deans select the four finalists. The four finalists then go before the selection committee, which is the Dublin and Sandersville Rotary Clubs. And this year, Catherine Wilcox, Sam Williams, and Eugenia Powell were the judges from Dublin Club and the two from the Sandersville Club. So they had the difficult task of selecting just the winner, the one person. But they have to give a three minute speech on what technical education means to them. They have to go through a series of interview questions and it's a difficult decision to choose the winner. It's not based just on the speech. It's based on how they can answer their questions and how they would do when they end up in Atlanta if they're one of the finalists. How they could promote technical education and how they think well on their feet. So our next competition will be February the 26th at Central Georgia Technical College where our gold winner will, and our Rick Perkins winner will compete with the other technical colleges in our region. So from there, we will then go to Atlanta in April, and if our gold student is selected a finalist, she will then give her speech again, go through a series of interview questions, and if she's a finalist, then she'll um, be selected with uh, the other group to do this again. So um, we're looking forward to Summer being our gold winner and doing really well for us, and so nice Summer, if you'll come give your speech. Oh, but I forgot to tell you, if she wins at the state level, she gets a car, a, brand, a, new, a new Kia, and she will be the, uh, tech, the spokesperson for technical education for the year. All right, thank you for having me. Have you ever been in the middle of an amazing dream, one that you wanted to see through to the very end, but just as the conclusion nears, you suddenly awaken? No matter how quickly you fall asleep, hoping to recapture that dream, you cannot. Even the most content souls long to reclaim dreams lost along the way. Teenage pregnancy was the interruption of my dream. The dream of attending college. The dream of giving my children every advantage. The dream of bringing pride to my family. Technical education restored that dream, made much sweeter by having my children bear witness along the journey. So I could stand up here and tell you the benefits of technical education, but then again, so could a simple Google search. I want to share with you how technical education can change a person's life. And I know because it changed mine. As an honor roll student entering her senior year, one would believe I had the world at my feet. I turned down early college admission that would have enabled me to skip my senior year because my grandmother advised, your senior year will be one of the best years of your life. Yet a few months into my senior year, my growing abdomen revealed the secret my baggy clothes could no longer keep. That promising honor roll student was now a pregnant teenager, too ashamed to even complete high school. And all the promise I once held seemed less likely. I became an all too familiar statistic, a single teenage mother without an education. Unable to find work, I began to research programs that offered the high school equivalency exam, which led me to OFTC. With my GD in hand, I was able to obtain work, yet soon found working minimum wage jobs require 60 hour work weeks just to pay the necessary bills. The balance between time spent with a child and providing for that child is a tightrope that all single parents must walk. Time and money are treasures rarely seen. After seven years of working two jobs, the realization that I'd missed out on many pivotal moments in my son's life convinced me to return to OFTC to further my education. While taking core classes for the LPM program, I discovered I was pregnant with my daughter. But this time, I would not drop out. This time, I would succeed. I worked as an LPM for 13 years in long-term care before considering returning to pursue my RN degree. OFTC did not just show me the benefits in returning, it dispelled all of my doubts. How would I afford it? How would I find time? How would I balance the demands of work and school? With OFTC's flexible schedule and payment options, as well as the RN Bridge program, there was no reason not to pursue my degree. And with the class diversity, I would not stand out as the older student. If any doubt remained, my dad's unexpected death removed it. He dreamed of being an RN and began classes yet never finished. 
Life's tragedy is not through what one does in his or her life, but in that which remains undone. Watching him lie in the hospital bed, the effects of the stroke wreaking havoc on his body and our hearts, we knew that for him there would be no degree, for there would be no recovery. With his death, however, his dream did not die. It was inherited. Every class I take, every accomplishment I achieve, every patient that I serve is in honor of him. I am the high school student who dropped out pregnant. I am the single mother with a GED living in poverty. I am the nurse who will devote her life to serving others. I am the fulfillment of a dream interrupted. But most importantly, I am his legacy, as they are mine, and what a legacy it shall be. I thought I'd lost my business in that fire, but my agent was there before the flames were out. He said, together, we're gonna rebuild. Our employees depended on it. My independent agent and auto owners made sure we didn't skip a beat. I mean, we didn't miss a single payroll. For whatever lies ahead, we're always there. Curry Maffet Insurance, now located in downtown Dublin. Call 272-1234. Start the new year in a new ride from Dublin Chevrolet. Dublin Chevrolet has the hot new 2020 Blazer for only $31,450. New or pre-owned with great financing options. Save almost $4,000 off this 2020 GMC Canyon. We make it fast, fun, and friendly. Take home huge savings on the Malibu LS for only $25,95. Call, click, or come see us. Dublin Chevrolet, the only dealer you will ever need. Um, I'm Susan Hammack and uh, it's my pleasure and privilege to introduce to you the Rick Perkins Award winner. The Rick Perkins Award is, um, we call it RPA for short at, at the college, but it's the Rick Perkins Award for Excellence in Technical Instruction. And it's given to essentially our instructor of the year. Um, the uh, Rick Perkins winner is chosen out of the instructors who have been uh, teaching for full time at OFTC for a minimum of three years and then they can be nominated by either their fellow faculty or by <coughs> students. Kelly Braxton is our RPA winner this year and she's an instructor and clinical coordinator for the uh, respiratory care program. And she is also the Allied Health Division Chair. Um, Kelly was actually nominated by a student and I'm gonna share with you what that student said about her and you'll understand why um, she's so special. Ms. Braxton taught the summer class after the previous teacher left. It is not in her wheelhouse, but she was extraordinarily prepared. And if she didn't know an answer to something, she didn't bluff her way through it. She said, I don't know, but I will find out. And then she did so. She genuinely cared for us and worked hard to make sure that we all had the best experience possible in what's already a short term. I left her class ready to take on AMP2. She did all that while remaining pleasant and keeping us all interested. I'd be delighted to take another class for Ms. Braxton. So I think that's very nice, and I'd like to introduce Kelly at this time. Bree. Just Bree. I strapped the oxygen mask over my patient's face in the midst of the loud sound of the chirping alarm. He looked at me. I discerned fear and uncertainty as I encouraged him to just Bree. Reassurance created calm as I witnessed tranquility settle in with my patient. I then myself took a deep breath, and I realized that a wise man once said, if a person is to shed the light of the sun upon another, he must first of all have it within himself. That day, my experience and training as a respiratory therapist allowed me to shed the light of calm upon what could have been havoc. Likewise, if an educational institution is to inspire others change lives and communities, it must first be worthy. And the technical college system of Georgia is indeed worthy. So let me tell you why. With technical education, our students become active participants in their own education. TCSG offers hands-on training, and as a result, prepares students for their occupation with workforce-ready skills in the industry. We graduate at a 99% placement rate and offer over 600 academic programs of study. Even better, with the Technical College System of Georgia, our students can begin their journey in adult education, take adult literacy and GED courses, and transition into occupational programs of study. 
And what really sets our organization aside from others is that these students can take their earned credit courses and transition to a four-year college because of our 25 articulation agreements in the Georgia University system. So I stand before you today, a respiratory therapy instructor and clinical coordinator for one of the best of TCSG's 22 colleges advocating technical education. It is my passion to inspire, educate, and build the foundation of our students and our future respiratory therapists. As a technical college instructor, it has truly been an honor to inspire others to accomplish all that they aspire to be. We volunteer our time in the community with affiliate hospitals both inside and outside of our service area at career fairs and health fairs. And while we offer our community with free services such as blood pressure checks, pulse oximetry monitoring, and disease management education, our students are simultaneously gaining the skills that are needed to enter the workforce. So, inspire, such a powerful word. It encourages, it motivates, it stimulates. It encourages our students to be successful in achieving their goal. It motivates those same students to become future leaders of Georgia businesses. It stimulates our economy. So in my experience at OFTC, I have discovered that TCSG is not just a system of technical colleges. It is our respirator breathing life into our communities. Thank you. Kelly Summer, what an amazing job that y'all have done and an inspiration that you are to our club and our community. Um, if y'all would, please come up. We'd like to present you with a, with a plaque. Um, and y'all please give these speakers a round of applause again. Thank you, President-elect Will. You. My name is Meg, Meg Greer, Meg Greer Evans, Meg Evans, you just pick a name, Meg is good. Um, I have the privilege of participating in the Central Georgia Alzheimer's Association Dancing Stars competition. It is going to be held at Macon City Auditorium on May the 2nd, and it is a Dancing with the Stars type of a program. So. I am a star dancer, and I'm paired with a professional dancer, and we rehearse winter, spring, and then we compete on May the 2nd, and also as part of this competition, we are asked to raise $20,000 to go toward the Central Georgia Alzheimer's Association, which serves Dublin and some other communities in our area. Uh, Alzheimer's is a cause that Rotary advocates on behalf of. We raise money every single week with our cart buckets. And so I'm asking you to consider making a donation uh, for my uh, campaign to uh, the Star Dancing uh, program. And um, you could do that through your business. You could do that individually. We have to do it online. Um, a lot of people I know are not comfortable with that, but I do have a paper form. So if you'd rather do it through paper and through a check, please let me know. I'll be happy to get that to you. Uh, but I'm very excited about the program. I really appreciate the opportunity to have just a minute to speak about it. They believe that right now over 5 million Americans are diagnosed with Alzheimer's and it's actually probably more. It's probably more like 7 million uh, that are about 2 million that are undiagnosed. They expect that number to grow to 16 million in 2050. So this is something that will affect us. It will affect every single one of us. And so I ask that if you have an inclination to make a donation, if you have an inclination to come to Macon and cheer, then I would greatly appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you, Megan. I think we can get some Rotary support for Meg and her campaign coming up uh, with Dancing with the Stars. So thank you for doing that and taking it on. Um, a few other announcements, uh, Ben Carson's gifted handbooks, uh, those are being given to all the fifth graders in the county. Uh, we do need some help in giving those out. Uh, it was partnered with OFTC and the... Uh, it's the city, the county, and the yeah, private schools. The city, the county, and the private schools, all fifth grade students. Uh, Janet was sharing a, a quick story about that, that one of the, the students or, that OFTC yeah. gave, 
it made a huge impact and found importance on her. She's kept the book, she's told it to others, it's made a huge impact, and these books are being given to fifth graders as a, as a children's book uh, that's you know, down a little bit, but it's a great story. Please, if you are able to help um, and give those books out on Wednesday, February the 12th, we're going to start at 830 at Southwest Lawrence Elementary and then go to Northwest Lawrence. February the 13th, which is a Thursday, we're going to start at 830 at TCS and then go to Dublin Middle. So please mark that on your calendar. We'll be sending out more information about that. Um, we also have the breakfast books, donations. Please get with Beth if you have donated a book. Uh, that does count as a makeup. So if you uh, do have books to donate, let us know about that. Uh, we have two names on the table. Please grab those, take a look at it. Uh, don't forget the cart buckets on your table, uh, raising money for Alzheimer's. Um, to our guest, Kevin, Nathan, and Whitney, thank you for being here. And uh, do we have any other announcements to come before the club? All right, the next week's program is Brandon Raphael. He's with the Macon Bacon, um, which is the baseball team in Macon, so please show up for that. If there's no further business, we are adjourned. This is good.